So most of you have probably never thought to look for more modern looking receptacles. Well, in this video, I'm gonna to introduce to you a much more modern looking receptacle, and it's got a really cool feature in that the outlets themselves are hidden until you actually wanna use them and plug something into it. So I'm gonna show you just how quickly this is to install, and then after I get it installed, I'm gonna show you all the features and exactly how it works and looks. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first step to installing this in any electrical install is to turn off the power that is going to whatever it is that we're gonna be working on. So in this case, we wanna turn off the circuit breaker that is supplying the power to this particular receptacle. Now the circuit breaker is off, now I can take my outlet tester and confirm that the power is in fact off. So I don't have any lights coming on, so there's no power there. No lights coming on there, so the power is in fact off. So now I can remove the cover plate, and then just out of an abundance of caution, I use my voltage detector just to make sure that there is in fact no power going to it. So now that I've confirmed that the power is in fact off, I can now remove the receptacle from the box, and then I can remove the wires from the receptacle. And a good practice for removing wires from receptacles or light switches is to start with the hot, then move to the neutral, and then to the ground. But one thing just quickly to note is that oftentimes you're not gonna just have one single hot or line wire, one neutral, and one ground. Really the only time that this is gonna happen is if this receptacle is the only one on the circuit, or it's the furthest one down the line from all the other receptacles. A lot of the time when you open up a box like this, you're gonna have multiple wires in it, which in this case I do have, but I've already made up pigtails, which is why you only see these three wires here. If I pull these connectors out of the box, you will now see that I've got three neutral wires and three black wires, and there are also three bare copper wires still back here in the back of the box. But these two wires here, one is gonna be my incoming or line wire that is feeding all of this, and then the other is gonna be the load that then is going on to the rest of the receptacles or whatever else is down line, from this box. And a pigtail is literally just a piece of wire that then gets combined with the wires that are already in the box that then gets connected to whatever device you're installing. And it's gonna be especially important that we don't just shove our wires into the back of the box. We're gonna need as much space as possible for this particular receptacle. And this is a visual as to why. This is a standard GFCI, so you know how thick these are and how much room they take up in a box. Well, if we take the new receptacle and we compare them, you'll see that the new receptacle is actually a little bit longer than even this GFCI. So these can definitely be a box hog. All right, so the first step to this is we're gonna to need to take the supplied mounting plate and take the new receptacle, insert the new receptacle into that mounting plate. Now you'll see we've got two ground wires here. So we're going to have to connect both of these to the grounds that are in the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my grounds out from the back of the box. I'm going to take this wire nut off of the grounds, take my pigtail, take it off. Now, I am one that typically uses wire nuts on my installs. I just think that they provide the most surface contact, and as long as they're installed properly, they're kind of hard to beat. However, as you saw with the other wires that are in here, I used Wagos. I personally like using Wagos in low amperage situations like this will be. This is a 15 amp receptacle. The lever connectors do have some very big pros to them, especially for DI wires. But just as a change of pace for the grounds, I'm gonna install these right here. These are actually made by Ideal. These are their insured lever connectors. They do all the same things as the Wago. They got the levers, all the same features and capabilities of the Wagos, but they do come with a couple of added perks. Instead of having to flip these levers up to insert the wire, you can actually just push the wires in to the connector itself and it'll lock into place. So I'm gonna start with my grounds. I'm gonna insert my first ground wire, just push it in. It's now locked into place. Take the second wire that's coming out of my box, just push it up into that connector, and now it's locked into place. And I can flip it over here to the bottom side, see that my copper is seated all the way at the top, so I know that this is fully seated and I've got a good connection there. Now with these stranded wires that are coming out of the new receptacle, I cannot just push those in. Those strands will get pushed down. So in this case, since I've got two grounds coming from the receptacle and the plate, I need to flip up two of those levers. I now just insert one of those grounds into the ideal connector, flip that lever down, and I'll just take the remaining ground and do the same thing, flip down that connector. And now all of the grounds are connected and secured in the ideal lever connector. So now that leaves us with our black hot and our white neutral. And if we look here on the receptacle, you'll see this brass or gold colored screw here and a silver colored screw here. Below the brass or gold colored screw, it says hot. 
and below the silver it says white. So it's telling you typically what color wire should go in each of these slots. I'm now gonna take my white neutral wire, connect it below the silver screw here where it says white, and then just tighten it down. Same thing for my black line or hot wire. It's gonna go below this, it's a gold colored screw. A lot of times they actually are brass, but this one looks more gold. Once it's seated, now I'm gonna tighten that screw down. All right, so now all of the wires are connected to the new receptacle. So now I'm just gonna push everything into the back of the box and then push the new receptacle into the box. And then once I've got the new receptacle seated properly, then I'll go ahead and tighten down the screws that then tighten it down into the box itself. Then once the mounting plate and the receptacle are tightened down into the box, I can then take the face plate and it just snaps on into place. All right, so now all of that is on. This is what it would look like finished. And if we go over here to the side, this is something to note. As you can see here, there is a little bit of a gap between the wall and the white part of the cover plate. And I believe the reason they did that is just to give some extra room in that box so that the receptacle itself wasn't just taking up that much more room in the box. But this does stick out away from the wall just a little bit. But I will say if we're not focusing in on it, we're just kind of looking at it in general, it's not really noticeable. And then with this popped out, as you can see up here at the top, there is one outlet over here. If we go over here to the side, you'll see that there's another outlet over here. And then if we go down here to the bottom, you'll see another outlet here. On this side over here, there isn't one, as the other three are taking up all the space. And now that I've got the circuit breaker back on, I'm gonna take my outlet tester, and as long as these two lights over here light up, that means everything was wired up correctly, and we have power going to the receptacle. So I just go ahead and plug this in. As you can see, those two lights are on. But just to confirm, let's also test out the side outlet, plug it in. And as you can see, those two lights are on again. Now this is the 15 amp version, which is probably what most people would want. They do also make a 20 amp version as well. But with the 20 amp, of course, you would also need to make sure that your wiring is capable of it. So at least 12 gauge wire and also have a 20 amp circuit breaker on it. And like always, I'll have links for this along with all the tools and connectors that you saw in this video. I'll have links for everything down in the description down below. If you're interested in any of it, all you have to do is click on those links and it'll take you directly to them. Now, before you go, while these things are very sleek, they definitely have a cool factor to them they do definitely come at a price. And this is not going to be something that most people are probably gonna be installing in every room in their house or even close to the majority of their receptacles because while these are unique, they are quite expensive. Also, if you found this to be interesting, you'll probably definitely find value in this video right over here where I go over how to remove a standard receptacle and install this new receptacle that has four outlets on it without having to cut out the original box, cut in the bigger hole and install a new box. You can use the box that's already there and get four outlets. So if that's of interest to you, just click on this video right over here and it'll take you directly to it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.